Every so often, you pick up a box of pennies from the bank and you get excited by what you see either by opening it or through the holes in the bottom. Stay tuned for another Penny Hunt and Fill episode, and I think we might have a great box right here. Hey everyone, it's Rob Finds Treasure, and welcome back to my channel. For those of you following my channel or this Penny Hunt and Fill series, you know that we've now hunted 282 boxes and we're just missing 25 cents in this Dansko Lincoln Penny album. We also have a Canadian Small Sense series going and we've kept track of all the Canadian Small Sense we found for the last 96 boxes. I wish we'd have kept track of all of them since the 282 boxes we've hunted, but we didn't do that. Either way, we have 68 of those 115. In front of me are two penny boxes, number 283 and 284 of the series. And this is hunting fill number 150. And I did say in the intro, I was excited about this first box. And for now, I'm going to slide this out of the way to show you why. I picked up this box recently. And when I flipped it around, didn't even realize I had wheat scent enters. I just noticed we had some circulated uh, coins here. But when I looked through the holes in the bottom, I saw a wheat scent ender right here. A wheat scent ender right here. A wheat scent ender right here. Another one right here and another one right here, and that's all I can make out from the holes in the bottom. We definitely, I believe, have five wheat scent enders. Majority of them are kind of collected right here, but we haven't even popped the top yet to see if there's more than five. As it stands now, it looks like we have five wheat scent enders in this box on the bottom, three reverses, two obverses, a 40 something and a 50 something. So it could just be a 40s and 50s dump. Maybe it's just gonna be collected in a handful of rolls, who knows, but I'm excited to pop open the top and I've already talked long enough. Let's go ahead and do that. Hopefully the top opens easy for me. Hopefully we see some additional enders on the top side, but uh, yeah, five enders already is a good start. All right, here we go. Let's take a peek here and see if we have any wheat scent enders. And you know what? Ironically, despite having five on the bottom, I do not see any on the top. All right. Well, it's not as exciting as it was a second ago, but still exciting with five enders. It's been a while since I've had that many, and you never know what's on the inside. And for those wondering, that's a 60s. Let's get this hunt started. As always, I'll bring you guys back in when I have my first find of the hunt. And at the end of the hunt, we'll definitely compare all of the finds to the albums. You know we're looking for wheat scents. We'd love an Indian head scent. We'd love some varieties, some proofs or foreign coins. Let's keep our fingers crossed. We find those. I'll be back in just a moment, I hope. Well, maybe it's going to be pretty exciting because nothing was in roll number one, but roll number two just opened it, flattened it out, and I see one, two, three wheat scents for sure, and there could be more. Wheat scent number one of the hunt right here is a 1944 Denver, so we'll quickly scope it for that D over S. And there is some damage around it, but it doesn't look like the 44 D over S to me. One wheat scent found, wheat scent number two, and that's a last year 1958 Philly. There is a naked eye visible 58 DDO. I'm just going to quickly scope it. I don't think it's it. Of course it's not, but that's wheat scent number two. And then wheat scent number three is another 1944, but this time Philadelphia. Three wheat scents so far in roll number two. Roll number three, same scenario. Just laid them out. We've got two more wheat scents in this roll that I can see pretty clearly wheat scent number four is a 1941 denver nice seeing some earlier 40s and wheat scent number five is a 1952 denver same roll and we had a third wheat scent in that roll for number six and it's another 1944 denver but not the d over s roll number four two more wheat scents have one in the front, so I flatten out the roll and I see another one in the back. This is the oldest so far, a 1938 Philadelphia. We'll definitely take that. That's seven. And wheat scent number eight is another 1944 Philadelphia. Roll number six, wheat scent nine, a 1957 Denver. Roll number eight of the hunt will give us 10 wheat cents already, double digits in the first eight rolls, and that's a 1956 Denver. 
Roll number nine, and we have one of the nicest wheat scents we have found in quite some time. Take a look at that peeking out. Holy cow. That is a stunner. That looks almost uncirculated. Hopefully it's not in the late 50s. We'll take something earlier. We need it for the book if it's in red condition. Ah, but it's a last year, 1958 Denver. Still a beauty. We don't see them like that too often. I'll definitely take that for sure. And, uh... That's a nice looking coin. 1958 Denver. Not for the book, because we already have a red one, but one for the collection for sure. Roll number 10. We have 12 wheat cents already. A 1946 Philly this time. Same roll. A baker's dozen. Another 1944 Denver. And that could be an RPM. Let me do a little research. It's not the D over S, but that might be an RPM. And I got to double check. It could just be damaged too. But I'll look at it and bring you guys back in with what I find out. Well, we've done a little research. And as expected, we definitely have an RPM. I want to just have you guys pay close attention to the uh, doubled RPM or the repunch mint mark here, here, and above. As well as this tail on the four. When I brought up Variety Vista... The FS502 for the 1944 Denver, and I go to the Stage C photos, we definitely have all those telltale markers on the Denver Mint Mark for sure. And on top of that, we have that little tail on the four. Definitely have the 1944D RPM FS502. I don't have that one in my registry or in my collection. It's not really worth grading, to be honest, because it's not in great condition. But I'll definitely, definitely flip it up and put it in my collection. That being said, let me bring up PCGS's price guide report. See what one goes for in the VF35 to XF40 type condition. And I'll let you guys know that here in just a second. Well, unfortunately, because it's a 1944D, they don't really price them in anything less than red and in mint state. A mint state 60 red is $45, which probably means that if it was a brown and in an xf or even a vf it's probably only a 10 or a 15 dollar coin so definitely like i said not worth slapping but definitely one i can catalog and put in the collection we'll keep an eye out for a better one down the road but that's still a nice find and we're only 10 rolls in just grabbed roll number 11 out of the box and it's one of the wheat scent enders which means we're probably gonna have quite a few wheat scent enders coming up here this will make 14 for the hunt hopefully it's an oldie that wheat scent enter for number 14. And it is an oldie. Look at that. 1919. A teen's wheat scent. So maybe it's not a 40s and 50s dump. We'll definitely take that. That's a pretty nice 1919. Might not be an upgrader, but definitely a welcome sight. Same roll. And we have two more wheat scents. I took a quick peek. We have a 1958 Denver for number 15. And I can see it back here. A 1951 Denver. For wheat scent number 16. Very next roll. Another ender. Let's see if it's another oldie. That wheat scent ender for number 17 of the hunt. Is a 1951 Philadelphia. Roll number 13. Wheat scent number 18. A 1942 Denver. Roll number 14 is one of the wheat scent enders again. That'll make number 19. Wheat scent number 19, also the ender. Another 1957 Denver. Roll number 18. We've made it to 20 wheat cents now for the box through the 18 rolls. 1953 Denver on that one. Roll number 19, and we have wheat scent number 20, and it looks like it could be an oldie. Let's see if it is. And it is, but it's another 1919, I believe, just Philadelphia again. Yeah, 1919 Philly, second teens wheat scent, but both are 1919. Roll number 22 is going to give us two more wheat scents. Wheat scent number 22 right here in front. And that's a 44S this time. And wheat scent number 23 is peeking out. It's a 1954 Denver. Roll number 23 is going to give us four wheat cents towards the back part of the roll, which will make the total come to 27 now. First wheat cent. That's a 1946 S, and there is an S over D over mint mark. 
which I don't see. Of course, I'll take a closer peek at that here in a minute. Another wheat scent right here. That's a 1935. We'll definitely take that. A wheat scent right here. Another 42 Denver. And I already saw the date. I think it's a 1930. And it is. Three 30s wheat scents to go along with a RPM and a couple from the 1919 year. Let's find some more. Roll number 24. Wheat scent number 28. A 53 Denver again. Roll 25. Wheat scent 29, one away from 30. And that's a 45 Denver. Roll number 26 is the fourth ender of the box. The one from the 50s I saw, and I think it's a 50S. That'll make wheat scent number 30. Wheat scent number 30 is indeed a 1950 San Francisco. Roll number 27. Wheat scent number 31 is a 52 Denver again. Roll 28. Wheat scent 32. It's a 1953 San Francisco. Roll number 30 is going to give us four more wheat scents, which will make 36 now through 30 rolls. The one on the front is a 1957 Philly. We have one peeking out right here. A 1953 Denver. We have one peeking out back here. A 1945 Philly. And then the other one I saw was another 44. And it does have a mint mark. It's a 44 Denver, no over mint mark, no RPM, but we'll take it nonetheless. Roll 31, wheat scent number 37, a 1946 Philly. Roll number 32, wheat scent number 38. It's a decent look at 1946 Philly again. Roll 33 will give us at least three more Wheaties. Wheat scent number 39 is right in front. A 54 Denver. Wheat scent 40. Coincidentally, is a 1940. And wheat scent 41 looks like it could be an older reverse. But it's just a 1945 Denver. Same roll. Wheat scent number 42 is a 1944 Philly. Roll number 34. Wheat scent number 43 is a 1951 Denver. Roll 35. We have 44 Wheaties now. 1954 Philly. Roll number 36. Wheat scents number 45 and 46. Number 45 is a 51 Denver. And number 46 is a 1942 Philly. Roll number 38. Wheat scent number 47. Another 1946 Philly. Same roll. We have our 48th wheat scent of the hunt. And it's our first from 1947. Roll number 39. Wheat scent number 49. It's another one from 1947, but this time with a Denver mint mark. I don't want to jinx it, but if we find one more wheat scent out of 11 rolls... We'll have a full roll of wheat scent so far in the first box of the hunt. Well, it didn't make us wait. Very next roll, the roll number 40 is going to give us our 50th wheat scent. That's a full roll of Wheaties. It's another 1944 Denver. We've seen a lot of those. And it's not the D over S, but we'll take it nonetheless. One full roll of wheat scents, and we still have 10 more rolls left, plus another box. Roll 41 has two more wheat scents for 51 and 52. The 51st is a 1957 Denver, and the 52nd one was peeking out, a 1949 Philadelphia, first from that year. Roll 42, wheat scent number 53, a 1945 San Francisco. Same roll, and we've got a couple of more wheat scents that I missed. Wheat scent 54 is a 1942 Denver. And wheat scent number 55 is a 55 Denver. First from that year, we'll take it. 
Roll 43. Wheat scent, 56. A 44 Philly. Roll 44 has that fifth and final wheat scent ender. It's a 40 something, probably 44, but let's make sure. As expected, that ender is indeed a 1944, and that makes wheat scent 57. Same roll, wheat scent 58 is a 1946 Philly. Roll 45, wheat scent 59 of the hunt. I think that's another 1919. I believe it's another 1919 without a mint mark. It is three 1919s in the box. Roll number 46 will give us our 60th wheat scent of the hunt. And it's a 46 Denver. Roll 47. 61 wheat cents. Our first from 1941 without a mint mark. So we can check it for the three different DDOs that the coin might have. I don't see them. Yeah, no DDO. Second from 1941 as far as the year. Roll 48. Wheat cent 62 is another 1946 Philadelphia. Well, all good things come to an end and that box was definitely a good thing. I know we didn't get any special coins, no key dates, no better dates in general, but 62 wheat cents in a box of pennies it's my second best box ever at this point. We did get three from the teens. We did get three from the 30s. We got that nice RPM 1944D FS502, which I'll take, and a whole bunch of wheat scents, as you see here. On top of that, we scored two pounds, 11 ounces of copper in the copper cup. Of course, there's lots more copper up here. Only one Canadian cent, a 1981. We got three coins from 1959. One pretty nice Lincoln Memorial Copper scent. It is a Denver Minted 1971D, but we'll take it. And then two 69Ss, of course, neither of which is the DDO. It's going to be hard to beat that box. We don't expect to beat that box. This is not a sister box. It has a different stamp from a different bank. So we know they're not brother and sister boxes, but maybe since we got 62 in this one, we'll see how many more we can get in that one. And more importantly, if we don't get a lot, can we get something old? All right. Let's go ahead and slide this out of the way, bring this over, and let's do a live opening on this box. I did not see any wheat scent enders on the bottom through the holes, but let's see if we have anything peeking at us on the top side. All right, definitely looks like we have decent amount of copper. Not as good as the last box, obviously, and I do not see any obvious wheat scent enders either, so we'll get right to the hunt. 62 on the board, how many more will we get? in box number two. Took us 11 rolls into box number two to get our first wheat scent from it, but we have one and it's number 63 now of the hunt. And that's a 1954 Denver. Roll 66 of the hunt and our second wheat scent of box two, number 64 overall, is gonna be another blazer. Take a look at that. I didn't even notice it till I came upon it. We already have one blazer, it was a 58 Denver. Hopefully this one's a little bit older. And it's another 58 Denver. Either way, it's still another nice find. That's two blazers on top of the board. And like I said, 64 wheat cents now overall. Roll number 67. Wheat cent number 65 is a 1953 San Francisco. We're on roll number 72 and we have wheat cent number 66. It's a mint marked 1947 Denver in decent shape. Definitely a tale of two boxes. We're on roll number 39 of box number two, 89th overall. We finally have another wheat scent. Only the fifth of the box, 67th of the hunt. And it's last year, 58 Denver. Roll number 92 of the hunt. Wheat scent number 68 is another 1944 Philly. Well, we're on roll number 99 of the hunt. And the box has been quiet for wheat scents. But we've got a nice coin under the scope. That's a 1972 Philadelphia minted Lincoln Memorial scent. When I place it under the scope, the first thing I always look at is the date. And I noticed we had a little bit of doubling here at the date. And then I went ahead and slid it over to Liberty and take a look at this. Definitely have extreme doubling on L-I-B-E and some of R in Liberty. And then I slid it up to the top and it gets better. Man, that is some nice 
extreme doubling on this coin. So because it's to the right, because it's a little bit on the date, and because we have extreme doubling on Liberty, I was able to narrow it down to a couple of them. And uh, when I narrowed it down to a couple of them, I figured it has to be the 1972 FS 102. We have all the same doubling as this coin exhibits, including on Liberty. And we even have the small little die scratch, barely visible on mine, but it's there. I went ahead and brought up PCGS. And sure enough, the 102 that they have slabbed here in the top grade is MS62 Brown. Now mine's a brown and we have the exact same doubling as this coin exhibits. Mine looks really good. Unfortunately, it's probably only in XF condition at best. Now, I guess it could push an AU, but I'm thinking it's more like XF. And unfortunately, when it's brown colored, they have to be in mint state to fetch good value. But uh, even in an XF, it's a 15. And if it's AU, it's probably more like $25 or so. It's not a coin I find too often, not the 102, but it's not the 104 or the 107. I tripled and double checked and it has the die scratch. So definitely, definitely will take that. Another variety found from the hunt. And like I said, not in the best shape, but definitely not terrible either. We will take it. I'll get it flipped up. We're almost done with the hunt. 68 wheat cents. We have finished that second box of this two box penny hunt. And I know the second box only had six wheat cents, but after finding 62 in the first box for a total of 68 on the board, definitely can't get mad at that. That being said, I don't know if we're gonna have any upgrades or additions despite the sheer amount of wheat cents we found, but it's still made for a fun hunt. The finds of the hunt are gonna be the three from 1919. We got a 1930, 35 and 38, all Philadelphia, two blazers. 1958 Denver. We don't need them, but I'll still compare them anyway. And then the two best finds are the 44D RPM FS502 and the 72 DDO FS102. Definitely some fun varieties found. I don't have any of these. Now I have one, and I don't think I have many of these at all, if any more than one. So I'll have to see if that one upgrades my personal one. As far as the side finds, just the one Canadian. Don't get a lot of these in the Texas area. That's from 1981. We did get 659s, two nice bright copper cents, a 69 Denver and a 71 uh, Denver as well. And then two 69Ss, not the DDOs. Speaking of copper, we did good. Five pounds, nine ounces. That means the second box, despite not having a lot of wheat cents, still put a lot of copper in the cup, almost three pounds worth. Five pounds, nine ounces is definitely a nice take. What's next to do is to go ahead and compare all of today's finds to the album and see if we have any upgrades or additions. And once I do that, I'll bring you back with a look at the book and some final thoughts on this two box hunt. Well, we finished comparing all of today's finds to both books and unfortunately no upgrades and no additions for either book. Obviously with the only one Canadian cent from 1981, nothing for the Canadian small sense albums. And then I tried to make a case, but nothing was worthy of taking a penny out of this book to upgrade, including the 58 Denver, because we have a beauty there. Obviously, those are not flipped up protected yet, but I have BU rolls. I'll add those to that. That's why they're not in flips. Now, after 284 boxes searched, we still have 209 cents found. And after 98 fines worth for Canadian cents, we're still stuck at 68 of those. Obviously, it would have been nice to get some additions, but I got a collection dump from somebody, and I'll take that 68 wheat cents, two varieties, a couple of BUs, and a lot of fun. If you guys had fun watching this video along with me, I definitely would appreciate that thumbs up. And as always, everyone, happy hunting, and thanks for watching.